Hi everybody, welcome back to Classic Replay. I just wanted to share a bit of a DIY video in regards to new shelves that I've had fitted. Completely not in line with uh, previous videos that I've done. But if anybody is out there struggling for space, these IKEA lac shelves are absolutely phenomenal. And they're the most simple thing to install ever. Even I can do it. It's not rocket science. Um, they're really affordable shelving solutions as well. And I can't tell you how happy I am with these new shelving units. And I just wanted to show everybody. Now these are the exact shelving units uh, that I purchased. The LAC shelving units. And they're really uh, long. And although it doesn't quite show it in the picture, they stretch all across my back wall. Now I actually went for the oak effect, which you can get off a different menu. And that was just keeping it in the theme of things with uh, my study. So the intended audience was somebody like me struggling for shelf space. And I just hope people find this um, video uh, very helpful. Now IKEA has all sorts of shelving solutions that um, I could really do with, not just in the study, but around the house. Now it wasn't my idea. I got the actual idea from uh, a YouTuber, Retro Flame. And I just noticed that she had all these shelves with uh, shoes on, a massive collection of shoes, and it looked awesome. I'll actually link um, in the description on this video, but she goes into the detail of how easy it is to set them up. Uh, she got her boyfriend and uh, brother-in-law, I think, to uh, actually fit them in the end. And it took them around two hours, if memory serves. It took me just over three because uh, I was doing most of it on my own. My wife helped with some of the uh, holding the shells whilst drawing the holes and measuring. But full kudos needs to go to Retro Flame for this because uh, it was her idea. In fact, a very creative one, uh, ingenious way of being able to store all your shoes, but at the same time looking good doing so. Now, I haven't quite sorted all of my games out in the um, order that I'd like but as you can see I've started to take stuff down from the loft that I haven't seen in years and it's now finally out on display and I can start picking off the shelf as and when I want to start experiencing some of the retro games I bought collected uh, a long time ago that's my disc collection of Amstrad CPC games that you can see on the right and then you've got my um, Codemasters collection. Some of it, not all of it, but the ones that I go back to um, probably the most. The RAM packs there, as you can see. Uh, there's the Kicks. So I've got loads of Kicks games, but uh, it's a case of getting them out of the loft, out of storage, um, and, and, and finding out, thinking about where I'm going to put them on the shelf. Again, uh, disc games for the... Amstrad CPC, there's a few Spectrum games in there as well, and Commodore 64. But uh, look at that, Super Ski for the Amstrad. Now, that was a really fast game. Uh, Weltris, uh, which is a spin on Tetris. It's a good one. Renegade 3, boo! But uh, yeah, some absolute classics there. And one of my pride of joys there, Crazy Cars 3. So, albeit a small collection by uh, other retro gamer standards, I feel like I've got my collection back, my retro gaming back um, on the shelves, on display. I've regained access. <laughs> oh, and that's a signed copy of Mega Blasters. So we've got Night Racer there, California Run, which wasn't great. Snooker Management, believe it or not, that's a brilliant game. Uh, and the little book of ZX Spectrum. And then Revs, the mighty Revs on the Commodore. And then just some books I've been reading of late. Um... And, uh, and continuing to read. And these shelves as well are really sturdy. You, could, you feel like you could put any sort of weight on them. And just there, in between uh, travel through time and the joystick, is a Sega 16-bit Raspberry Pi that I built recently, um, which is really cool. And then again, an NES. And then just some of the uh, arcade party pack. Now, that's brilliant. Fantastic. Nice to see that out in the collection again. Uh, all the PS4 stuff, some classics there, some really good games. Yakuza, uh, that's a fantastic one. And the Wipeout 
Amiga, Amiga collection. And then some of my favorite um, PS3 games. Is that Are those even considered retro yet? Um, and then Space Hulk for the Sega Saturn. Fantastic game. A DDI 3 there. Um, DDI 4. A 512K CPC RAM pack there. Which uh, comes in handy. R-Type, the, the new version. Mish Mission Genocide. Now that was a fantastic uh, shoot 'em up. Uh, fantastic vertical scrolling shoot 'em up. The new CPC Soccer. I mean, I'm just having so much fun. Just re reminiscing, looking at these things. I'm not sure if you can make it out, but there's the Crash 2021 annual there. So big shout to uh, Chris at Retrofusion. And uh, a few retro books as well. Uh, my first car, the Mini. Uh, TV Cream, that's a good book. I recommend that. Retro Tech, I picked that up really. It was affordable. I mean, something like £2. And that Brian Clough uh, CD is just a CD from the BBC uh, in his in his own words, talking about his life, uh, football. It's fantastic, absolutely brilliant. Really recommend it. And I picked that up for 50 pence from a charity shop. But, I mean, just look at the size of these shelves. I mean, it's the length of the shelf and the width of the shelf that's really impressive. Anyway, that's what she said. <laughs> But hopefully uh, the video can some way show uh, the size of these shelves. And they are really impressive when you see them with all your kit on. And they're not just the ultimate shelf for women's shoes, but they're also the ultimate shelves for retro gaming. Now, I could have chosen more shelves. I could have had something like six or seven on the wall, but I just went for three in the end. And I think the reasoning behind that was everything's high up. And my four-year-old and six-year-old won't be easily able to access it. Now, I've got hundreds of Amiga games, and that's just a few that you can see there on the left, plus some PlayStation. I mean, I've probably got an entire collection of PlayStation 2, uh, GameCube, you name it. I've pretty much got uh, boxes and boxes in storage as well. It's costing me a fortune. In fact, if my wife knew the entirety of my collection... I think that would be grounds for divorce. But I've also looked into this. Um, men are flawed in the sense that we want to collect things. Maybe we're on the spectrum slightly, I don't know. But nearly every guy I've ever spoken to has, so, has some sort of collection habit. For example, my wife's father, my father-in-law, uh, he collects coins and books and in the thousands. We can't take them with us, which is a shame. But uh, maybe ultimately we're doomed. <laughs> But uh, me personally, I actually get a lot of enjoyment out of the collection that I've got and dipping in and out as much as possible. And it is difficult with family, which is why most or every other evening I stay up late. <laughs> but thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe. Please like the video, comment, ring that bell. Uh, and until next time, bye.